This video is about a tool which, like most tools, can be dangerous if used improperly. So if you're going to use one of these, be sure to get the appropriate licensing, training, and certification if necessary. Follow all applicable laws, rules, instructions in the manual, safety procedures, and common sense. And most importantly, don't blame me if it goes wrong. So this is a RAM set. In fact, it's an actual RAM set brand RAM set. Um, I think as much as the company would probably dispute this, uh, RAM set does seem to be kind of a generic term for this style of tool uh, at this point. Uh, so what this is, is a tool. It's basically a gun that fires nails into concrete uh, to attach wood to um, concrete floors or walls or so on. So the way you use this is uh, um, you load, you have these special nails that are intended for this use that also have a little retaining, I don't know if you'd call it a sabo exactly, but thing that holds there. And you uh, open it up like this. You have a, a powder charge. Uh, this one is a spent one. You can see it's uh, blown open and the, the primer has uh, been used. But it would load into here. Uh, you close this up. Hold this against your workpiece, and then you would strike this uh, with a hammer, which would set it off. And it would fire the nail into uh, uh, into your uh, target surface. Um, and I said this is basically a gun because it uses a 22 caliber uh, rimfire blank uh, as the source of energy. Uh, they come in different, these loads come in different uh, levels of, of power, different amounts of gunpowder in them, basically. Uh, yellow being, I think, next to the highest. They go from gray to purple, I guess. Um, and they have, like, the different colors are intended for different uses. I don't know if you can see there that's that yellow paint on it. Um, see, yellow is for, like, firing into um, solid concrete uh, all the way down to brown. That's for firing into mortar joints between concrete blicks. Uh, blicks? Bricks? Bricks. Um, concrete bricks. Um, and I said, yeah, these are attached. These are used for attaching uh, either... Uh, um, wall, the, the, a board that's going to be the, the bottom plate for a wall um, to a floor in, a, in say a basement or a concrete slab like this you can see uh, this is a 2 by 4 and one of these has been driven through here's the, the red plastic part is this it's been driven through the 2 by 4 and about an inch into the concrete um, or to attach things to walls um, either wood or electrical boxes or whatever so the reason I got this is uh, for the project of finishing out my lab, my laboratory, um, in the back of the garage. Uh, I needed, uh, th the wall was already put up by a, a contractor, but I decided to change one little thing with, uh, well, that's complicated, but anyway, I, I needed to put up a short, another short piece of, uh, of wood on the floor, uh, attached to the floor, and uh, this is a, an easy way to do that, and also quite a lot of fun, because it involves ba big bangs and, and so on. Um, so I got this for that. And then I also need to attach some uh, furring strips to the wall. Um, the, the lower part of the wall is concrete block. And I want to attach uh, boards to it that I can then put insulation between to insulate that area a little bit. And then there'll be a, a, a wall covering over that. Like this, you can see there's two by fours that have been uh, uh, ram set nailed into the concrete wall here. And then this uh, foam insulation board placed between the uh, um, between these furring strips and then the uh, the wall can attach to these covering this area. Uh, so this is a great choice for attaching for the first project of attaching the uh, the board to the floor. Um, some debate on whether it's the best tool for attaching uh, um, those furring strips to the, uh, to the concrete block wall. Uh, for solid poured concrete it would be great. Um, for the concrete block most people seem to think it's fine as long as you use the mortar joints there's a particular color of load I think it's brown um, I'll double check before I use it but uh, I think uh, I think it's brown that you use to fire into the uh, uh, the mortar joints between the concrete blocks um, if you actually try to attach the concrete blocks themselves then you get spalling which is basically kind of blow out on the back side as the nail goes through it leaves kind of a, a crater or even the front side it can leave a crater um, anyway, so the, the other way to, to do this would be to use uh, um, screws. There are, you may have seen these uh, blue plastic sort of coated screws, or screws that are coated with blue crest, blue, boy, I can't talk at all today. Screws that are coated with blue plastic 
uh, material that are intended specifically for drilling into concrete. Uh, but those are very time consuming and uh, there's mixed res reports on how those hold as well. Uh, you have to be careful to kind of blow all the dust out of the hole after you drill it. It takes a long time to drill and then blow out the dust and then screw it in and, and so on. This would certainly be a lot faster and a lot more fun uh, if it works, but the, the downside is this potential of spalling or cracking the block. Um, so I happen to have, there were two uh, blocks left beside the garage, which I'm certain are, are leftovers from actually building that garage, um, that I can play with. So I thought I would, uh, just as I haven't used one of these before, other than I, I did the wall, the, the wall plate part already, uh, I thought I would try some of the different loads and firing into the, one of those spare concrete blocks and just see what happens uh, with um, you know the different loads and firing into different parts of the block. Uh, I'm not going to be able to test the mortar joint part, which is what I'll actually be using, but uh, I can test firing into the solid part of the block and into the webbing um, and just see, like, well, if when you get the spalling, if you hit the wrong place, how bad is it? Um, and mainly it's just another excuse to play with this fun tool. Uh, so uh, that said, let's head outside. Okay, so we're outside. I've got the uh, block I'm going to test with. I've got a piece of wood. I'm going to over the uh, the thick part of the block. Uh, I've got some uh, green loads, which are supposed to be the uh, this is a uh, level th power level three. There actually, six levels. Three is the the middle of the common uh, range uh, green, and it's supposed to be the appropriate kind for firing into concrete block. Um, so we're going to try that in uh, the appropriate load into the appropriate place on the block and see what happens. Uh, and I've got my uh, safety glasses. And I've got my uh, hearing protection. Now, you don't have hearing protection, so I may need to uh, duck out the sound, depending on how loud this is in the video. So don't blow out your speakers or whatever, but uh, let's give this a shot. So here is uh, the nail. I'll load it in. Open that up. Get ourselves a, uh, a green powder load. You can see there, uh, see unlike the one I showed before, the, uh, the end is all crimped over here to contain the powder. And they're painted uh, to indicate the power level on them. So this is a green load. <clears throat> we load it in. Close it up. <clears throat> Position it where we want it. And we fire. And there we go. And uh, you can definitely smell the gunpowder. So there we go. Oops. Yep. That is uh, pretty solidly attached. Okay, so let's uh, let's try doing not quite the right thing then. Let's uh, get this piece of wood over the thin part of the concrete. Uh, and we are attaching closer together than they're recommended to go to. Um, but let's, uh, let's see what happens with this. Oops, I need to get another nail. Hold on. Okay, yeah, and before we uh, do that, I just wanted to see there's like no cracking or anything. Um, it doesn't really seem to have damaged the block at all. So, uh, yeah, that gives me some good confidence here. All right, so let's uh, try going into the wrong place here. Get ourselves a nail. And uh, here's the, uh, the spent cartridge. See, the end is now blown open. So, all right, here we go. Didn't hit it hard enough. There we go. And, uh, you know, it didn't, uh, I don't know if you can see that, 
yeah, it didn't blow out anything in the backside or, or anything. So, yeah, it's not too bad. I'm having a lot more confidence about using this on concrete block. Um, yeah. Well, what happens if we use too big of a load? One moment, let me get some of those. Okay. Another nail. Spent a uh, green load. This time we'll use a yellow load, which is uh, too powerful for this application. And we'll see what happens there. Oh yeah, see that went in uh, quite a bit deeper. These were a little bit under set actually. This one went in quite deep. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see that. This big blow out there. I'm gonna have to move this to better light. Hold on. Okay, see this? This is what I was worried about. Uh, this major crater on the backside here. Got it in some better light so you can see it. Uh, but again, this was with a uh, too powerful of a load for this uh, this material and this thickness. Um, so with the uh, appropriate load, even into uh, uh, the thin part, although it didn't penetrate all the way through, um, I didn't have a problem. So uh, yeah, this gives me some more confidence about this. Um, I think I'm actually going to try, since I've got some of the brown load, which are the ones for uh, the mortar joints between the bricks, um, I'm going to try firing one of those into here, which would be too weak of a load. Uh, so let's see what happens with that. Okay, so we tried uh, green, which is just right, yellow, which is one step too powerful. And now we're going to try uh, brown, which is one step too weak. And I guess it's just not going to penetrate very well. But here we go. Let's fire it again. And I forgot to put my uh, ear protectors back in and that was quite loud. Ow. So you can see that uh, didn't penetrate very deeply at all. And uh, just left kind of a little bit of a crumbly mess on the block there. So, fun playing with a ram set. So yeah, I'd say this tool lives up to its uh, expectations both as a, uh, a fashioning tool and as being quite a lot of fun. In fact, I'd say it's a blast. Oh, that was terrible, wasn't it? Sorry. Um, anyway, um, yeah, it seems to work pretty well. I have a lot more confidence about using it on block um, and uh, especially the the uh, firing to the mooring, mooring, mortaring joints, I guess mooring it to the mortar joints, um, with, uh, brown loads, um, is supposed to be even more sort of reliable and cause less problems. So, uh, and I have a lot more confidence in it. Uh, I thought I'd just take, uh, I sort of explained before how you use it, but I didn't really explain how it works. Um, so a normal, uh, 22 caliber, uh, cartridge would be just like this, um, uh, except we'd have a, uh, a bullet at the end of it. So the uh, firing pin, this being a rim fire, would strike usually the edge of this, uh, uh, the back of the case here, because it has a rim fire case that have an integral primer in them rather than a separate primer that fits in a, a pocket in the back. Um, so the uh, usually just have a small indent on the on the edge here uh, of the back uh, that would ignite the the priming material, which is a pressure sensitive uh, material that uh, um, kind of explodes rapidly and uh, sets the gunpowder on fire and uh, that burns the exploding gases would then push the, the bullet out of the end of the case and down the barrel. Uh, in this case there's no bullet, it's just kind of crimped over and uh, it doesn't literally file, fire the nail like a bullet. Uh, it's not like the, the nail is just sitting in front of this. Uh, I believe it's actually firing a piston which then the piston drives the uh, uh, lives in here and, and uh, so it fires the piston and the piston drives the, uh, the nail into the, uh, the material. Uh, and that's why it's important not to, to shoot this without uh, uh, without a nail loaded, or you know, without uh, having it up against a suitable material and whatnot, because otherwise, then the uh, the piston would just strike the. Uh, it won't have enough. Uh, won't have the uh, the resistance of driving the nail in to slow it down, and it'll kind of damage itself by uh, ramming the piston into the stop. So, um, but that's the basic theory of operation here. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad I got this. It was about. Uh, well, you can rent these. If you have a bigger job, you can rent them. Um, 
from you know home improvement stores and whatnot, uh, I, at least here in the U.S. Uh, I have no idea. Being sort of quasi firearm, I have no idea what the uh, the laws are like in other countries, but uh, uh, at least here it's not a big deal. Um, and um, if you're going to rent one, you probably want the fancier ones that are actually you know you pull the trigger and they're a little bit so easier to use um, than, than having to hit it with a hammer. Um, Although hitting it with a hammer really isn't a problem. I only had trouble in the last couple of clips because I was standing at an awkward angle, so I wasn't getting a good swing on it. If you're kind of, um, you know, knelt down or squatted down in a more appropriate position, uh, it's really, it's not a, you don't have to hit it super hard or anything. It's really easy to use. Um, but anyway, if you're going to rent one, you could, you'd probably rent the fancier one. Um, but I had enough jobs for this uh, that it was worth buying it, even for just a kind of semi one-time use. Um, it was going to be over more than one day, and it was about twenty-five dollars, something like that. And then, you know, either way, you're going to have the expense of the loads and, uh, and the nails and so on. So, uh, yeah, for me, for me, it made sense to uh, to buy it and uh, have this fun toy to play with. So, um, if you enjoyed uh, this video, if you uh, like this, then uh, please like the video, comment, and subscribe. It helps other people find it too. Thank you.